In the 20th century, communication technology changed beyond all recognition, changed beyond our wildest dreams. And as ever, the next leap forward dwarfed everything that went before it. The telegraphs, telephone, radio, satellites, microwave links and transmitters that made 20th century man the most connected of all now evolved into a new form. The internet. With pure data coursing through its veins, the internet reaches across every continent and connects the entire world. It takes communication into another dimension. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. When the Soviet Union beat the Americans into space by launching Sputnik in 1957, it scared America. We should have been the first ones to have it, if there's such thing. I guess the American people alarmed that a foreign country, especially an enemy country, can do this, and we fear this. The Soviets had taken the technological lead, and it startled America. As a defense, the USA wanted an indestructible communication system. The answer lay in the grouping together of computers. A network of computers was assembled and interconnected. Each could talk to each other, each could transfer information freely, and multiple users could share the same resources. It was a golden era of very high-powered people, very dedicated people, each with their own specialty. It was really a small club of, of experts that quickly escaped from us in the mid-70s as the numbers of, of, of uh, hosts began to go into the many dozens and then into the hundreds later on in the decade. The system soon grew far beyond a military mechanism. It spread across the country with astounding speed. But one of the revolutions of internet technology arrived almost by accident. Email was an ad hoc add-on to the network. It was an easy task. We just added it in. And suddenly, it dominated the traffic in the internet, in the ARPANET at that time. That was the first inkling that what was important about this new technology was not that computers could talk to each other, but that people could get into it and talk to each other and get engaged. Instead of a dry engineering task, it was a dynamic social human endeavor. Email swiftly attracted a whole new division of computer users because it was such a useful way to communicate. People could put in a message to their machine and it would be transferred via a phone call to another computer across a modem. The same thing would happen at that machine. It could respond to the message or forward it. Conversations could take place and messages spread like ripples on a pond. Computer users in colleges and universities wrote programs to enable information to travel across all of the networks. The internet was born. And with it, chat rooms, user net groups, virtual worlds. The net was communication's newest incarnation. One day in the late 70s, early 80s, I walked into one of my graduate students' uh, research labs and instead of doing the research I had assigned them, I found them sitting in front of these computers, essentially surfing the net. They were on bulletin boards and chat rooms and news net groups and all the rest. There was something going on that I was totally unaware of. This, these new young graduate students had their own network. They were exchanging information, talking to each other. Very different from us older scientists who would put this technology, the infrastructure together. There was another phenomenon taking place there, and that was the birth of some of these Usenet groups and such like. 
Like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, you know. It got out of control in a positive way. We, no one controls the net now. The 20th century was when man's communications truly came of age. 